Yo, what's going on? This is Relaxing LD underscore Jackson, and we are back with another episode of the Highly Advised Podcast. This is myself and Big Cozy Too Cozy, and this week we are focusing straight on the big event that is coming up in a few days, being UFC 276. Big Cozy Too Cozy, how are you? I'm doing good, my brother. I'm doing good, my Brody. Shouts out to all the listeners. Shouts out to all the fans. Shouts out to all the supporters. Shouts out to all the people that don't support. You motherfuckers going to hell, and we won't see you in the afterlife. Um, Got to give big shout out to Mama Deuce. Got to give big shout out to Nigel's mom. Got to give big shout out to all my people's mom. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And also big shout out to Spence. Right now, listeners, he couldn't make this episode. He actually tripped. His kneecap got dislocated because he was chasing the chicken. You know what I mean? So that's what happens sometimes when you chase the chicken, you chase the turkey. You you trip, you fall. His nose got pushed in, but he'll be all right. He'll look like a new man next time he's on the podcast. But like Nigel said, listeners, UFC 276 preview. We're going to give you a, a brief rundown on what we think of the fights and who do we think we're going to, who's going to win, excuse me. And then that's it. But before we do get into that, Nigel, I do want to tell the listeners this. Make sure you follow us at the Highly Advised Podcast on Instagram, at Hi- Advise Highly on Twitter, and the Highly Advised Podcast on YouTube. Make sure you sub- subscribe to us on the Highly Advised Podcast on YouTube. Make sure you like, comment, share, tell a peer about our stuff. We will lovely greatly appreciate it i know that's not good grammar but fuck it who cares it's a free space here a safe space as some people would like to say now before we start getting into this card and now i would like for you to kind of open up with that i do want to give a uh i want to shed some light on on a little bit of news before we move on to mma and this is combat sports related okay um, the listeners, before we get to the nitty gritty of the UFC, um, two well-known football players, probably is going to be a future Hall of Famer in Adrian Peterson and another maybe Hall of Famer. I don't know if he's first ballot. I don't think he should be. Le'Veon Bell. I'm going to uh, say no. Uh, I mean, I would agree with you too. So anyway, Adrian Peterson and Le'Veon Bell, they're set to actually box each other listeners. Um, By the time this podcast comes out, by the time you actually listen to it, you might have known. Maybe you don't know. Anyway, they're going to box each other under exhibition rules, so there's not going to be a winner unless somebody gets, like, knocked out. Um, Nigel, what do you think? I think – it's just very interesting that all of a sudden all these athletes are starting to box. Makes me wonder, are they broke or they actually love boxing? Well, did you mention who they're um, also boxing on the card with? Oh, damn. How could I forget? Blueface. That's right. Blueface, baby. That guy, he's boxing Nick Young. Yes. Listeners, if you don't know who Nick Young is, he used to play for the Los Angeles Lakers or for all the shade roommates like Spence, he used to be, uh, what, in a relationship with uh, Iggy Azalea? Yes. Yeah, and um, there we go. They're boxing each other, too. I in, I know people are going to think I'm crazy, but I'm putting my money on Blueface on that fight because at least he already had a, a boxing bout before this. <laughs> I mean, it's just fun. <laughs> it's just all entertaining to me, man. Like, I, I'm gonna watch these fights while they're happening, not because like it means anything, but I think it's gonna be fun to see it. And plus, me as a Steelers fan, I want to see Le'Veon Bell. It's like fucking um, Minnesota Vikings versus Pittsburgh Steelers, like for real in the ring. So I'm curious to see it. The Blueface fight, I think, is gonna be funny too. So I want to see that just because I have no idea as to why him and Nick Young are actually boxing each other. It doesn't. It just seemed to come out of the blue, but 
I'm here yeah. for it. I mean, it's for money. Like, I'm not <laughs> mad at Blueface boxing for money. I'm not mad at that, you right. know, because uh, I don't know how long his music career is going to last. So him getting into boxing, it's a good outlet for him, you know, because he could still make rap music and it could do box. He's just bringing more money in for himself. Now, these other guys, these athletes, them boxing, I question it because it's like, all right, do you, are you doing it for the love of the sport? Because you, you weren't seeing this like five, six years ago. You weren't seeing this at all. Or are you doing it because you broke? And I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say one or the other. I'm just curious. Maybe a devoted listener who's a devoted fan of these athletes that we mentioned, maybe they could provide an answer. But if not, whatever. So that's all I have to say on that. I don't know. It's interesting because you see a lot of people do it. Like we've seen Nate Robinson, Ocho Cinco. Yep. Now Le'Veon Bell. Frank Gore, he was another one. Didn't he knock out who he fought? He knocked out some other guy, but you're not thinking – you're thinking of the – I think his name is Deron Williams. Mm. Yeah. And then he he didn't win that fight against him, but I think he had another fight after that, and he knocked whoever out. I don't know who the person is he knocked out. Hmm. Well, it's just interesting to see all all this go down. And their boxing matches are more anticipated than it seems like some of the other boxing matches are with champions. (laughs) Yeah, it's crazy. That that is crazy, you know. There's a bunch of fights that people want to see, but they're not put together due to boxing politics, and uh, that's such a shame. Where the non-boxers are spreading like wildfire across ESPN, CBS Sports, Bleacher Report, but <laughs> the actual championship fights, you have to actually like look for it. It's crazy. It's wild stuff. It's boxing, but you know what? We don't have to search for. Tell us the UFC Mm -hmm. because they make sure that, Hey, this is a big fight. They're promoting it everywhere. Now I'm sorry, Nigel. Now listeners, if you are mixed martial arts fans, then please tune in, please listen to what we have to say. Give us your thoughts and let us know what you think. Listeners who aren't mixed martial arts fans, I would like to invite you to at least check out you know, give us a chance to explain our, our our thoughts or predictions or whatever on these fights. And hopefully it, it might entice you to check out some MMA. Not that we're promoting UFC or anything like that, because we can definitely guarantee you we're not getting paid for doing it. It's just that, that, you know, we're just talking about shit that we, that we really fuck with. So Definitely, you know, I would just say just hang on board for the non-MMA fans. And if you're going to jump off the ship, jump off the ship till you die. So <laughs> that's all I have to say. No, I'm just playing. You know, I fuck with the listeners. No, nah, that's funny. All right. Yeah. So the first fight of the night. Well, I'm sorry. Not the first fight, but the first fight we're going to talk about of the night is Macy Barber versus Jessica I. Okay. Now, what are your thoughts on that fight? Uh, so I think this is a fight that Macy Barber should win. Um, I think she, she's, she snapped her little losing streak that she had a little while ago. So I think what she's like three and two her in her past five fights, Jessica, I, she's only won one fight in her past five. And, um, I think Jessica is on her way out the door. I don't think, this might sound like a little rude, and I'm not trying to be rude, but I always thought Jessica I was definitely a little overrated. And I think she was just a product of her of her time, meaning like there wasn't a lot of women with with a good skill set in the flyweight division, let alone bantamweight, because I think she used to be a bantamweight before she dropped down um, or before she switched weight classes. Now, this is not to disrespect Jessica I or anything like that, but I just think Macy Barber is going to beat her in this fight. And I think that Macy Barber, her being the younger woman between the two, will play a factor in it. Now, if Jessica I beats her, then I guess it will show that Macy Barber, she really has to go back to the the shed to work on some tools because I think this is a fight that she should not be losing at all. 
Um, I think this is a good veteran versus, you know, up and comer type fight though, with Macy Barber and Jessica. I, I see Macy Barber winning this fight. I think she's just kind of better overall as a fighter than um Jessica. I. And not only that, I feel like her stand up is good enough to where she'll beat her in the stand up. And if she goes to the ground with her, I think she can dominate her there as well. I think Macy Barber is actually all right. She seems to be getting better over time. Like if I'm not mistaken, she's still pretty young. Yeah, she she's definitely young. Um, she's definitely in her early twenties. Um, I think the thing with Macy Barber was the UFC was trying to page Van Zant her, meaning like give her a big push and market her and stuff. But the thing with her, she was losing fights. And now she didn't lose a lot of fights. She only lost two fights. But still, though, I it's just you had to slow down that hype train. And now that the hype train has been slowed down and then she's, you know, she's been picking up, she, she won her last fight and shit like that. I think just a fight with Jessica, I is a good fight for Macy Barber to see where she, where should she be going? Should she be moving up or should she once again, take another step down because she's not quite ready to fight stiffer competition in a weight class. That's fair enough. Um, the next fight we have is Uriah Hall versus Andre Munez. So I'm not f- really familiar with Andre Munez, but I do know Andre Munez is undefeated in the UFC. And Uriah Hall, even though he lost his last fight to Sean Strickland, where it's just like he couldn't pull, pull the trigger and he like, I don't know if it was a mental lapse or it was just frustration in the game plan. I don't know, but he just could not pull the trigger. I don't think Uriah Hall is going to get any better than what he is right now. Like I said, I'm not familiar with Andre Munez. I haven't seen any of his fights, but I'm not impressed with Uriah Hall with his last two fights because prior to the Sean Strickland loss, Remember, he had that free accident win against uh, Chris Weidman. So that's not a fight that you could really be like, oh, well, you know, you can really count it on his win streak. Um, the, th- the fight before that, yeah, it was good. I mean, it was good for Uriah Hall. But like I said, once again, w- which was the, uh, the, the fight that he won before the Chris Weidman won? Uh, Anderson Silva. When he beat Anderson Silva. Right. Like I said, it was good for Uriah Hall, but it wasn't like, oh, okay, we're looking at a future world title contender. I don't think that of Uriah Hall. I think him beating Sean Strickland was going to start giving me um, the thoughts of like, like that, oh, maybe he could compete for a title. But when he lost to Sean Strickland the way he did, I was just like, it still looks like he's still gun shy in a sense. And I don't know. I think Andre Munez is probably going to win this fight. Just just looking off like his 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 streak right now in the UFC. It seems like he's a hot, fresh young guy looking to really basically climb the ranks faster than, than any other unknown prospect. From looking at, a, I'm not really familiar with Andre Munez either, but from looking at his record, he looks to be a pretty good guy on the ground. He beat Jacare on the ground. So, I mean, you know, you can't be a slouch if he did that. Uriah Hall is not necessarily the best on the ground as, as well. So, if he can be more consistent on the ground and actually get him there, I have, don't see why he couldn't just tap him out. And to me, I think that's really going to be the difference maker. I feel like Uriah Hall gets gun shy, especially when it comes to people who can take him down and possibly work him on the ground because that's just not his bread and butter, which is fine. But I feel like that his awareness of that kind of stops him from being as effective. Yeah, no, I'm, I mean, well, let's just move on because I, I don't have anything else to say about your whole because I, I definitely don't want to be disrespectful to the man. So, right. Yeah. Well, next we have Donald Cerrone versus Jim Miller. Yeah. So this is for the listeners who are who are still here at this point. Um, this is kind of like a short notice fight for Donald Cerrone, kind of like last minute. If I'm not mistaken, I think it was like last week, it was notified that he was going to step in to fight Jim Miller. Um, as far as this fight goes, I'm picking Jim Miller. I think 
he's the better fighter between the two at at the at these uh guy stages of their careers. Donald Cerrone has a want to fight in forever. I think he's on a six fight losing streak, if I'm not mistaken, or 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 at least a five fight losing streak because he had that one um draw against uh what's his name Nico Price, um. So, Dan, that's crazy. That's all off memory, too, man. Damn. Yeah, you've been killing it tonight. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm looking at the stats. I'm like, wow, he's right. So, um, Jim Miller, though, yeah, I think he's going to be Donald Sorning. And mainly, is, I think it's because of the short and fight factor. And, two, Jim Miller, he's the type of guy where – even at this at this stage of his career where he's more or less of a journeyman slash veteran. And when I say journeyman, not to disrespect him, but he's a guy that, you know, what, 23 wins in the UFC? And I'm just going to guess. You could fact check this, but what, 15 losses or something like that? 14, 15 losses? Who are you talking about, Donald Cerrone or Jim Miller? No, J- Jim Miller. Jim Miller is 34 and 16. No, no, his UFC record. Oh, his UFC record? I actually don't yeah. know what that is. Let me look that up. Yeah. Go, go ahead. I'll find it while you're talking. All right. But anyway, I think I think Jim Miller beats Donald on the ground. I think B- Jim Miller has the better grappling. And on the feet, even though Donald Serrano is known for his kickboxing, his Muay Thai, I just think, at the, like I said, once again, at this stage of their careers, I think Jim Miller – is better on the feet right now, especially when it's a short notice fight. Um, I think Jim Miller might get a finish on this fight. I truly do. Um, I don't think he'll knock Donald out. If he knocked Donald out, I'll be like, whoa, Donald needs to hang it up right away. Right. But I think he's going to um, submit Donald surrounding. Um, I predict I predict a second round submission. Uh, I, if he stops Donald in the first round, I'll be impressed as well. I think he stops Donald Cerrone in the sec in the first round. Because, okay, not because Donald Cerrone, you know, is isn't skilled or anything like that, but I think Donald Cerrone is just kind of at that point in time where he's. I think Donald Cerrone is what he is at this point in time, unless he can actually catch Jim Miller and knock him out first, which is you know, of course, a possibility. Right. I, I just don't think he his chin has it. I think he's just kind of at the point where he's like, hey, this one last hurrah is it. And that's why I think he was going to fight Joe Lozon because Joe Lozon is at that point in time in his career as well. Like, it's, I don't think he's going to fight too many more times, you know? They're both legends, you know what I mean? But at the same point in time, it's just is what it is. Yeah, the Donald Sorner and Jim Miller, they'll both be Hall of Famers by the end of their careers. Um Donald Cerrone will probably end up being a first ballot. Jim Miller, honestly, Jim Miller could be a first ballot too if he keeps on fighting until like UFC 300, which is his goal. And UFC 300, if I'm not mistaken, Nigel, I think that's – we could probably get to UFC 300 by the end of 2023, right? Yeah. Because we're, we're about to be in the 80s this summer. The fall, we're gonna be we're gonna be finished up the eighties, and I think the winter will start the nineties. Uh, uh, my nah. math, could, my math could be a little wrong, but I think we'll get to UFC three hundred next year. Well, at the some point. See, the way I see it is, it's June now. It's UFC seventy six, so that means we have at least six more number of cards, which will put us at eighty two, right? Right. So then that means there's twelve more next year, unless they speed it up and do like two in a month. Well, if I'm not mistaken, two seventy seven is at the end of, of July or yeah, it's at the end of July with Pena and Nunes. And then 278 is in August. More than likely 279 will be in September. They might, they might do another one in September because remember that uh, 281 is going to be in October. I would say that you're probably right because we usually do get like 14 numbered cards a year. Yeah. So that's kind of crazy. We're almost there. We're almost there. I think it's I think it's possible, but yeah. like I said, both of them are going to be Hall of Famers. Um, so the next fight, listeners, is a very highly touted and favored prospect in Ian Gary, yeah. who looks to be like the next iteration of Conor McGregor. Maybe not Conor McGregor as far as trash talk, but it could be the next iteration as far as Conor McGregor, as far as skill and, and uh, bravado, 
in the octagon. I don't, I, I'm not going to say out the octagon because he's not getting in trouble like Connor is getting in trouble. Um, Ian Gary, he's fighting a gentleman named Gabe Green. Gabe Green, I'm totally not familiar with him. I don't even know if Gabe Green is a UFC newcomer or he's already had one or two fights in UFC. He's not really known. Obviously, he's he's a prelim fighter. Um, and that's not just dis- to disrespect him. He's just not known. So he might have just starting his UFC career for real. Uh, see, I don't – just like the Andre Munez fight – it's hard just to make real predictions about these fighters that I'm not familiar with because they're not really known in the right. game yet. Because these guys, these unknown guys, actually might be very skilled and very, very good. I picked Andre Munez in that fight just off his win streak. But with this fight, I'm choosing E. Gary just because I'm assuming this guy, Gabe Green, was just b- brought in to build up Ian Gary. And, that, and that's just my assumption. And if Gabe Green gets the job done, kudos to him. But I I think this is probably one of those UFC – the UFC's putting the machine behind him, so they're getting him an opponent that may be, you know, challenging, tough, I guess, but it's a fight that he should win. So I I guess I'm just going to go with Ian Gary. Listeners, viewers, commenters, you know, you know, don't – shred us in the comment sh- shit on us or whatever. We're just not familiar with this gentleman. Uh, what we will start doing, or I think Nigel, before you give your take on this fight is before we do breakdowns of these fight for the fighters that we're not familiar with, maybe we should just start watching these highlights and shit. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. Um, but looking like I'm not familiar with Gabe or Gabe Yo Green either, but in the UFC, he's two on one. Um, you know, I, I would say that, with that being said, Ian Gary is probably in a good position to beat him, but this is also, I would guess, a, a stiff test for him in a division since he has more wins than losses in the UFC. And I happen to know one of the fighters he fought. So, you know, it's it's a, it looks like a little test for him. I'm assuming that the UFC booked it in a way that he possibly could win because they want to, you know, kind of give him a push, clearly. Right. So I would assume that that's the plan. Just off of me seeing more of Ian Gary's fights, I have to go with Ian Gary, but I'm curious to see if he can pass the test they set up for him. Yeah, yeah. He's he's obviously somebody they're trying to develop and put to the next level. Right. Yeah. So the next fight we have is Robbie Lawler versus Brian Barbarana. Now, Bob, Ryan, Robbie Lawler, he just fought Nick Diaz. That was his last fight. And um, I, I think he kind of wasn't fighting for a little bit prior to that. Um, so I guess he's trying to be a little more active as a, as a fighting. Um, this is a interesting fight for him because Brian Barbarina is a stiff, stiff test. He's, he's kind of well-rounded, but he's not really necessarily great at anything, but I think that he could also bring him in in some deep waters because he is one of those fighters that are just kind of hard to take out. So this might end up being a war type fight if Robbie Lawler and him just kind of get into it. It could be kind of entertaining. Um, but I think I'm going to take Robbie Lawler because I can only I, – I feel like everywhere in this fight, Robbie Lawler is better than Brian. I agree 100%. I, um, let me give a little context – I mean, not context, but let me say something related to this fight before I actually explain my prediction. Um, Robbie Lawler and Brian Barbarina, they actually got promoted to the main card of, of UFC 276 oh. because Misha Tate and Lauren Murphy, you heard about their fight being canceled off the card. Yeah. Yeah. So their fight actually got rescheduled for uh, another fight night. Um, more news on that later, listeners. But uh, yeah, Robbie Lawler, Brian Barbarina, they're now the the pay-per-view portion of this card. Um, I agree with Nigel's take that I think Robbie Lawler is better than everywhere than Brian Barbarina. I think this is a a massive step up in competition for Brian Barbarina. Um, I get it. Robbie Lawler, he's not looking so hot these days. He's losing a lot since he, uh, won, since he lost the belt to Tyron Woolley years ago, but it's still Robbie Lawler. You know, I, there's not too many people that I'll pick against Robbie Lawler if they're not in the top 10. Outside of the top 10, I might choose Robbie Lawler nine times out of 10, and this is one of the nine times I'm choosing Robbie Lawler to win this fight. I think he's better than Brian Barbarita 
everywhere. I think he's more durable. I think his strike is a lot better. Uh, if it needs to go to the ground, I think his wrestling is, is better, at least uh, uh, g- definitely good enough to stand up. Um, obviously, he has the finishing ability. That He has the championship IQ, so he has the experience in, in the octagon for sure. Um, now, some kudos to Brian Barbarita. As you mentioned, Nigel, he's a tough, he is a tough fighter. He's very durable. Don't expect to land a few punches on him and you think that he's going to go to sleep. No, you, you ha- you're going to have to earn that knockout. And Robbie Lala will earn it. And I think he will get a second round TKO over Brian Barbarita. I That's just good. think it's going to eventually become too much. Um, what I, I do want to add to that with Brian Barbarita is I think he did lose his last fight against Matt Brown. Now, I understand it was kind of a close fight, but I thought Matt Brown did enough to, to edge it. I feel like if Brian was struggling with a guy and Matt Brown, somebody that Robbie Lawler kind of beat handily when he fought Matt Brown back in the day, I don't think Brian is going to have much more success than Rob. Now I understand for the, for the MMA guys, they're probably like, Oh, well, MMA math doesn't work. I get that. And it, I agree. It doesn't work, but I just think that Robbie Lawler is just a much better fighter than Brian Barbarita and no disrespect to Brian Barbarita. Cause once again, he's, he stepped up and took this fight. And this is, he beats Robbie Lawler. Brian Barbarita is looking at a, a a top 50 fight in the UFC if he beats Robbie Lawler or maybe a, a top 10 on the bottom half. Yeah. You, it's a big deal to beat Robbie Lawler when you're somebody such as Brian Barbarita. I just don't think Brian is going to pull this off. But uh, shouts out to the both of them. Now, um, the, the main event of the prelims is Brad and listeners, correct me, Riddell or Riddle against Jalen Turner. Um, I was looking at their fights recently, and <laughs> it looks like it's good, about to be a stand-up fight between them. And I would think that Jalen Turner would have some uh, flashy type stand-up that might win him and win this fight for him. I think he's like kind of just a little bit more. I would say, uh, what's the what's the best word? Like he has a, a little bit more deception in his strikes. While Brad Riddell, it looks like he's just more of a straightforward fighter, and I think that would uh you know, be in the favor of Jalen Turner. So this fight here to me is kind of a pickup fight. I agree. I know Brad Riddell might be the favorite, especially he had a, even though he just lost to Hafiel Fiziev, right? That's how you pronounce Hafiel. Yeah. I think, I know he just lost to him, but he had a bar burner fight with Drew Dober. So people see that he, he, he could strike. He's willing to trade in the pocket and he's not just a, I'm going to duck my head and pray for the best to throw overhand rights. He actually looks like he knows what he's doing. Um, I, I've, 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 listeners, you could correct me wrong, not you correct me wrong, but I think that Brad Verdell has a good use of his multi. Um, I'm picking Brad Verdell to win in this pickup fight. I could be very well wrong. Jayla Turner could really turn it around. I just think Brad Riddell just he's fought a little he just fought tougher competition. And I think that helps when you're fighting guys who has to fought the kind of competition you have fought. I feel like that helps with your experience, your IQ, and you're you're used to dealing with somebody who who poss- who perhaps is better than you. So when you're fighting a guy that's maybe on the same level as you, or maybe a little less, it's kind of a little bit of I uh, I don't want to say relief. The challenge is not as difficult. Now I'm not saying Jalen Turner is a difficult, I mean, easy challenge. No, like I said, it's a pick him, but I think Brad Verdell would do enough to get a decision in this fight. Um, like once again, I could be very wrong, but I, to pick him, but I'm just flipping the coin and my coin just went over to Brad Riddell. All right. So the next fight that we would have, um, because Robbie Lawler would be the first fight on the main card is Pedro Munoz versus Sean O'Malley. Now this fight is very interesting to me. And um, also I, I want to hear as to why Kenny Florian said that this might be a, a good fight for Sean, but me personally, I have it. I have this fight personally as a little bit of a pick of myself because we know that Sean O'Malley can fight and he has great stand up. 
And we know that Pedro Munoz has some pretty damn good stand-up as well. And he has a chin at that. The thing is, is that Sean O'Malley will probably get his chin checked in this fight. And we're going to see how well it stacks up the Pedro Munoz so we know it can actually stay in there. Or we're going to have to see some type of ground game from the one of them because this fight has the potential <laughs> to be like a little bit of a, a barn burner, if I, in my, my opinion, like a very interesting fight. So, I, I mean, I'm curious to see as to what happens. Yeah. Um, I, I agree that this fight is definitely a pick em. It's hard with this fight, too, or who I think is going to win. Um, I think, in my opinion, in my uneducated opinion, I think that this is a extremely a tough test for Sean O'Malley. This is easily the toughest opponent he's ever fought. And you could tell that Sean O'Malley can't fight. You could definitely tell that he got the skills. And you could definitely tell that he got the IQ because when he's beating these fighters up that he's beating up, yeah, they might be cans or cab drivers, whatever, and not to disrespect them, but, you know, it's like they were brought in to stare at the lights. So I think that this fight is going to either be a Sean O'Malley coming out party or I told you so from a lot of people that he's not that good. I think Sean O'Malley is going to win this fight, but I don't think he's going to have an easy time winning this fight. I think Pedro Minos is a dog, and I think that Sean O'Malley's footwork is going to actually going to be the reason why he wins this fight. Kenny Florian from the Anika Florian podcast listeners, uh, don't listen to them, listen to us. But they were saying, um, Kenny Florin was saying that Pedro Munoz was kind of like stationary. And that's kind of like tailor made to Sean O'Malley's game. And if Kenny is right on his assessment, and you know, Kenny would know a lot more than us because he challenged for three world championships and he's currently commentating for the PFL. So he knows more than me and good old Nigel would. He's a legend. But, huh? He's a legend. Yeah, 100%. So if Kenny's right in this assessment, then I, I, I'm, you know, he, that means he, Kenny knew what the fuck he was talking about. And I kind of agree that Pedro Munoz is a little stagnant because remember in the Dominic Cruz fight, he did have him hurt. And Dominic Cruz was able to come back, utilize his footwork, yeah. and, and, and steal a win. So, and when I mean still, like, he he won that fight without a shadow of doubt, but that was a fight that Pedro Munoz could have capitalized on and maybe get a finish. Maybe not. I don't know. But so I'm picking Sean O'Malley by decision. I think Sean O'Malley proves that he belongs amongst the top 10 of Bantamweights with this fight. The next fight we have is an interesting middleweight bout. We have Sean Strickland versus Alex Paella. And I find this to be an interesting fight that the UFC put together. Apparently, after this fight, if Alex is the win, he will get the next shot at Israel Adesanya. And I I have him to win this fight because I don't think Sean Strickland will be able to... I don't think he'll be able to use his stand-up against him the way he has other fighters. Yeah, uh, I think the UFC booked this knowing that, and I think <laughs> that they are looking forward to getting him in the title shot with Izzy. I I agree. Um, the Israel Alex Pieta fight is a fight that could sell itself. I think the UFC sees that. Is after Robert Whitaker and Marvin Vittori, the UFC is like, damn, we can't really get him any middleweight contenders to help sell pay per view. So Alex Pieta, a guy that knocked him out before kickboxing, beat him twice overall back at kickboxing. You know they're going to use the footage. You know they're going to keep highlighting that. Alex Pieta, you know he's going to be talking shit about that. You know Glover Tejera is already talking shit about Israel doesn't want to fight him, doesn't want to see him, yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. I think Alex is going to win. I think this is actually a terrible matchup for Sean Strickland. He, he, I think Alex is a guy that if you're going to be trading punches with him, you – 
hopefully st- striking wise, you're the shit too. Because if not, you're gonna get knocked out. And Sean Strickland style, I don't see him being able to duke it out with Alex. Now, if he beats Alex Pieta, I think it's gonna be like, wow. Okay, Sean, you know, maybe Sean should get a title shot. I'm not saying he he will, but like this, I think, like Nigel said, this fight is UFC made for Alex right now. The next fight we have one of two title fights, Alexander Volkanovsky versus Max Holloway of the trilogy fight. I think that this is going to be an interesting fight because this is really the one that makes it. I thought that Max Holloway got closer to beating Alexander. Oh, I'm sorry. He in the second fight they had, it seemed like he was more in tune as to what the game was. But even then, Alexander Volkanovsky, he's just very fast in a stand up and can stand there with Max Holloway, who is one of the best stand up fighters in the UFC. I have Alexander Volkanovsky winning this fight and taking the trilogy. And that's uh, I, I feel like he's getting better. And I feel like while Max Holloway is good, I think he just has his number. And I feel like Max Holloway might be better going up um, lightweight because I know he can contend with a few people there as well. So I disagree with that Max can go up to lightweight. Um, the reason why I say that, because I think he's just not built for that. Yeah, he's not built for that weight class. Um, yeah, I know people go like, oh, well, look at the Dustin Poirier fight. I mean, it that I feel like if Max fought anybody else too, like Justin Gaethje, Charles Oliver. Well, you know, Max beat Charles Oliver. That's a crazy thing. So maybe Max can compete at lightweight. Maybe. But but certain matchups, not all. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Okay. So maybe he can. Um, so I'll take that back. I apologize. But I am picking Volkanovsky to win this match uh, fight. I think Volkanovsky is one of the greatest game plan esque fighters out there. It's like him and his team could break down a fighter and, and see their weak points and they attack it. Volkanovski can match Max's cardio. He can match. He can match his speed. The yeah, Max might have more finesse and skill in his boxing and his stand up and his striking, but Volkanovski's stand up and his striking is no slouch neither. And at the same time, Volkanovski does have the knockout power that Max does not. So I think this right here is going to go to another decision. It could be fight of the night. I just think Volkanovsky is just going to have his number again. And it's unfortunate for the the Max Holloway fans or the people that want him to win. I just think that Holloway beats any other featherweight, not named Alexander Volkanovsky. And, well, I, I just hope that the fight is very entertaining and stuff. But I just don't – I just – I don't think Max will just get it done, man. It, I just, I don't see it. So after he beats, well, if he beats Max, do we say that he's the best featherweight of all time? 100%. I think he is. And I know some people will be like, oh, Aldo or, or Conor McGregor. Mm-hmm. The, Conor McGregor, he, he had a say in best featherweight of all time. But once he knocked out Aldo, he moved up. Never wanted to come back down. Never defended it. Never defended a belt as well. Max, he was making a strong ass case that he was going to be the greatest featherweight of all time. But Volkanovski beats him. Now Volkanovski, he already beat Jose Aldo before he got the belt. Then he beat Max. Then he beat Max again. Then he beat Brian Ortega. Then he finishes uh Korean Zombie. Ch- Korean Zombie, Chang Sung Jung. So I think if he beats Max Holloway a third time, I think right there, but like. Well, he's the greatest. Does that mean he cleaned out his division? No, not necessarily. I think now you can make that Josh Emmett fight. If Arnold Allen gets a big uh, win in the division, you can make that fight as well. So there's a couple. You can't forget about Yair Rodriguez if he's able to win. So there's a couple, you know, onesie twosies fights here that Volkanovski could still clean up. But as far as like beating the best of the best featherweights of all time, he's beating them. And I think that if Volkanovski was fighting Connor at, at featherweight, I think Volkanovski would have been the man to beat him too because of because of his very uh, versatile skill set, not just with the striking, but he has damn good wrestling as well. 
So one more question. If Max wins, do you think we get the fourth fight or do we move on? No, the fourth fight will happen. I just don't think that it will happen next because I think what's going to happen is if, and it's a big if, if Max wins, the UFC is going to try to book Max against another another person. Maybe it could be Josh Emmett, Yair Rodriguez, Arnold Allen, whatever the fuck. Then they're going to book Volkanovski, get somebody to 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 wa- go through real quick, wash their ass real quick. Then they're going to do the fourth fight, and then Volkanovski and Max is either that they're going to tie, do the they're either going to tie. Or Volkanovski is gonna walk away with, with you know, beating him in the series. But with that being said, though, I know I've seen a lot of people saying like, "Hey, if Max wins, it's gonna suck because obviously we're gonna see a fourth fight, and if Max wins that fourth fight, we're gonna see a fifth fight to see the definitive winner, yeah. which sucks because it's like, you know, it's like we're watching um, the NBA playoffs all over again, you know." best out whoever wins four first in the series it's crazy so i feel like we should only get the fourth fight if they're you know both doing the to be doing the best to be number one and number two after clearing out a couple people each but yeah yeah i agree with that you know that's just me but the main event of ufc 276 is israel adesanya versus jared cannonier this is an interesting fight Lyle, what are your thoughts Get his name right. Adesanya. I said it. I'm not going to stop and put it. it, it Adesanya. You said his name slow. I said it. Uh, You need to say it faster. Nah, I'm good. Anyway, I think Israel wins this fight. I I think he's going to win by third round TKO. Um, Jerry Kennedy is a damn good fighter. I think Jerry Kennedy is, is a great middleweight for sure. I just think that the two fight the two fights that are not good for him is Adesanya and Robert Whitaker. Um, now, since his fight with Israel is what we're talking about, I'm just going to explain like what I mean. I think that one Israel doesn't really have to do much in this fight. He could really pick Jared up from the outside, throw leg kicks, body kicks, maybe you know throw a couple of head kicks, you know hit him with a few jabs, some straights. And then once he broke, once he broke, breaks Jared down, you know, gets his timing right, see the tendencies that Jared is doing or what he's trying to do, I think Israel could go in for the kill and knock him out. I, I just don't think Jared, the only way Jared could pull this win off, if he's able to close the distance, stop Israel from moving around, and just throw haymakers until one of them lands. I don't think that he's... And now, if he drags Israel to the ground and tries to to wrestle him, that could be a game play too. But I always, when I talk to people about Israel Adesanya, I'm like, yo, his his uh, defensive wrestling is underrated. It's kind of slept on because look at Robert Whitaker. Robert Whitaker could have hold him down, and Robert Whitaker is one of the better wrestlers at middleweight. Marvin Vittori could not hold him down. And Robert Rattori is one of the better wrestlers at what middleweight. So people can't go in there thinking like, well, I'm going to take the skinny guy down and wrap him up, choke us out, and da-da-da-da. No, it's going to take a lot more than that. You either got to be a world-class wrestler, like, I don't know, give me a, like Chael Sutton in his heyday, you know, or you or Dan Henderson, that's another one. If not, you're going to have to game plan to, to be him or you just got to be a better striker than him. So uh, you can't just be a one-trick pony in, in, with uh, wrestling and think that's going to be okay with Israel. I don't think Jared has the skill set to take a win from Israel out of Saudi. I think Israel will pick him apart uh, in three rounds, break his ass down, and then go for the finish. And then we maybe we might get Israel versus Alex Pierre the, the grudge match later in the year. I have Israel in round four, just because Jared Cannonier is a pretty tough out and he's a good fighter, you know, like he's pretty good everywhere. I don't think he's going to necessarily get caught early in the fight, but it, this fight kind of reminds me of him versus Robert Whitaker. And if you remember that fight, uh, Jared Cannonier got re- caught real bad at one point in time in that fight, it got really wobbly and 
Israel has more of a opportunity to do that just because of the way his striking is. He catches you from angles that you don't really see. And not to say that he's chinny or anything like that, but I feel like his wrestling isn't necessarily the best wrestling. So Israel Adesanya isn't necessarily, I don't think he's going to struggle too much unless, unless his wrestling is just superb in this match and he really just overwhelms him, which I mean, it's possible because of who Jerry Cannonier is, but I just don't see the fight going that way. I I think strength might be a factor. Like, Jared probably is much stronger than Adesanya, but as you know, and everybody with a, a, a brain in their skull knows that strength isn't the only thing when it comes to high-level grappling in MMA. There's guys... you. There's guys in Agile that you could probably beat in an arm wrestling contest it, that fights for the UFC. But that does not fucking mean that you can outgrapple them. You know what I, I mean? Know. Yeah, it's like they're they they know their shit, their technique. They they practice it, they practice it, they've trained it, they drill it, they drilled it, they know some shit, they know some sneaky shit that we don't know, you know, and we watch the shit consistently almost every weekend. And they know shit that we just don't know because we're not in the gym training as hard as they are. Yeah, this is their shit. Exactly. So I I, I don't think Jared is going to be able to utilize his grappling to beat Adesanya in this fight. I think that is his best idea. But then once again, you're dealing with somebody who's fast as fuck who has great footwork and you said it yourself could throw strikes at different angles that the average person is not seeing, not thinking and not believing where it came from. Darren might get hit. It might be like, where the fuck did that come from? And once he has those thoughts in his head, that's going to fuck with him mentally. Then Adesanya is going to do his thing. So that, but that's my prediction of the main event. All right. So what do you think is going to be the most entertaining fight on this card? It's either the co-main event or, well, I think the main event is going to be very entertaining. I do. I know a lot of people talk shit about, oh, Adesanya is the leg kick master. He's in boring fights, da, 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 da. I feel like people are still hanging on to that Romero shit because I'm like the fight with Whitaker. I didn't think that fight was that bad. I'm not saying it was the greatest fight in the world, but it wasn't like some snooze fest, like people like to say, and you can definitely can't say his fight with Vittori or his fight with um, Paulo Costa were fucking Romero bad. They weren't. So I think this fight Israel is trying to prove a point. Obviously, Jared is trying to prove a point. And I think these guys are going to try to go at it a little bit. The co main event could be the fight of the night for me. I, but I don't know. We'll see. I, what fight I think might steal the show, though, is Robbie Law or Brian Barberina. That's those it. Those got those guys like to punch. Uh, they like to block punches with their face a lot. So I think that it's either going to be that fight. Or I would say the Alexander Volkanovsky Max Holloway fight. That's going to be a fight to see. Yeah, I, I feel like all the fights we talked about are all fights to see. Yeah, even for the Macy Barber, Ian Gary, those type of fights. The reason why they're fights to see is because hey, these guys might be the future of the UFC. We just yeah. you just don't know it yet. You know what I mean? Same yeah. thing with Andre Munez. We not familiar with him, but he might be the future of that division. We don't know yet. And uh, I think this card is a, is a good card. It's obviously the best card on paper of the year. And hopefully the USC keeps rocking and rolling after this card. Do you have anything else for the listeners this week? As um, far as this week goes, no. But I do want to say something maybe that's not unrelated to combat sports. And Nigel, you probably want to chime in on it a little bit. I know the, the biggest hot topic that's been happening from last week into this week is Roe versus Wade, Roe v. Wade, however you want to uh, transcribe it. Um, me, talk about Big Cozy, me, I stand with uh, with the women 
who who believe in their body is their right to do as they please. Um, I'm not trying. I'm not going to get into the political spat. I don't care in the comments or you guys hitting me up in the DMs. I, I'm not. You're not going to bait me into it. I stand by the women. I support women 100. percent um, Yes, I get. I understand that there's probably some context where like. Oh, how can you uh, abort a baby that's already six or seven months? And I'm kind of like, we're not talking about that at all. I think common sense will tell you the right answer with that. But, you know, for the women who believe that, hey, it's their it's their right to either keep the baby or not keep the baby for whatever reason, you know, we can always get into nitty gritty. There's a lot of gray area of this shit. I stand with those women to have their choice of their own bodies that they were born with and that they have to deal with, you know, once again, I'm not going to really get into like the whole political thing and all that, because I know people, people are going to either agree with me and be like, yeah, you know, you're right, cozy. Or they're going to be like, Oh, you know what the fuck you're talking about? You're a hardcore liberal, by the way, I'm not a hardcore liberal, but whatever. The way I see it is, I think it's a shame that, you know, women have had that right taken away from them, but I feel- No, no, don't say that. They didn't have that right taken away from them. They made it illegal for them to do what they were, what they had the opportunity to do before at their own will. No, 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 no. So, I mean, like, if you're talking about like at the, the federal level, they basically say, hey, this is not a federal law anymore. It's among the states. If you're talking about the states level, yeah, if you're talking about the states that actually did activate the trigger laws and right. be like, yeah, it's good. Yeah, if you're talking about that, okay, cool. Well, yeah, and women uh, uh, women in those areas, yeah, they're dealing with a lot right now. And really, it's just this is something that affects women all over the country, and it's, it's just a shame that they have to go through that. Um, to me, personally, I feel like I'm not ever going to be in a position to make that decision. So I feel like I don't necessarily have the right to say somebody if somebody should or should not do that. So, you know, I feel like that should be given to the person who actually is going to be in a position to have a baby, which is not me or you. And, you know, I feel like it's it's a very sad day in America that this has happened. But, you know, it I guess we will see as to how things go. Yeah. So you listen, as you hear from us, too, we definitely stand. With with the women, I believe that if it's her body, it is her choice. I'm not gonna fucking argue with you. I'm not. You could eat a dick, you could eat the skin off a dick, and you could die for all I care for. <laughs> I will not argue with you. I don't give a fuck. So um the listeners, with that being said, make sure you check out UFC 276 so we could chop it up. Um and we could, and you could look forward to the next episode, so we could talk about the fights after that happened. But make sure you follow us at the Highly Advised Podcast on Instagram, Advise Highly on Twitter, and make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube at the Highly Advised Podcast. Make sure you like our shit. Make sure you comment on our videos. You know, share with a friend, family better, ah, family members, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And once again, shout out to Spence, my dog. I hope you're. I hope you heal up from chasing them chickens. Um, you can follow me at Relax and LG underscore Jackson. <laughs> um, we will be back next week talking about more things, possibly UFC things, all types of fun <laughs> things and whatnot. Uh, you have been highly advised. We will see you next week. Sure, 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 sure. Uh.